Well, hello everyone. This is Jason Cisco, and we are live coming to you on a Wednesday, and we are so excited to connect with you wherever you might be watching or listening around the world. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Church Triumphant in our studios. This is Prayer Nation. We are excited to step into this new year with a season of prayer and fasting. And in my last broadcast, I talked to you a little bit about preparing to fast, and many are now in their fasting period. And just like to uh, just say a big kudos to all of our fasters out there, uh, whether you are here at the Church Triumphant in our Church Triumphant family or whether you are somewhere else around the world, uh, this is a season when many, many churches start their new year with prayer and fasting, and we are excited. This um, week, we're also doing prayer at the church from 7 to 8 each night, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, three nights in a row. And so it is that uh, cacophony of community, that agreement and alignment that comes together with the body of Christ as we join as a mighty army in prayer, and then you continue to multiply that all over the world, imagine the impact and the effect that the body of Christ is having with our collective prayer and fasting that's going on right now. Now, obviously, if you fast without praying, you are just going um, without food. You are not really fasting. Fasting is only fasting from a biblical standpoint if it is joined with a spiritual intent or spiritual motive and nothing is more important in that context as prayer is. Prayer can do whatever God can do. It can go wherever God can go. And when you are anointed or I am anointed, we are as old as the anointed. God is working. His spirit is just constantly uh, amazing us. And I'm going to share some testimonies here today. And we're going to do some praying together collectively. I really felt impressed today that instead of just talking about prayer or doing a few uh, minutes of prayer after each segment of teaching or talking about it, that we would instead do quite a bit of actual praying today. Uh, what a novel idea on a prayer broadcast that we would actually pray together. We do pray a lot and it is very important and vital, but I think it's also very important that we have our marching orders and that we're clear about what we're praying about. And this is why we spend time talking about the patterns of prayer and the prophetic rhema words that apply to where we are right now in the spirit that help us all to make sure that the timing and the will of God coincide together. These are very important. So as we start today, let's, as we come into this new year, let's Let's take these uh, tools that God has given us and that we have learned uh, so much about as prayer nation, and we're going to step into that arena. And so we're, when we go into the arena of the heavenlies, when we step into that, that place where the throne of God is accessible to us, when we get in the Spirit, so the Spirit is in us, but when we get in the Spirit, that is where... All of the battle takes place. That's where the warfare is. And so we want to prepare ourselves today for all of that. And then we're going to do a little bit more of just prep on some specific things that we're going to address today. And how do we address those things together today? All right, let's start by just submitting ourselves to God and aligning ourselves together as the body of Christ with his lordship and headship. Father, we just thank you today that you are with us. We thank you that we can hear your voice and that more and more people in your body are getting tuned in and are capable and not only capable, but also listening and operating with that understanding. As many as the sons of God, uh, as many as are led of the spirit, they are the sons of God. We are getting into that mind of Christ. And I thank you for that privilege of being able to hear your voice. I thank you for the privilege of being able to do your will. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for every home. We thank you for every intercessor. We thank you for every man and woman of God, every pastor, every missionary, every evangelist. We thank you, God, for every seasoned intercessor and every uh, new beginning prayer. We thank you, God, for no matter where the scope is, we are the body of Christ and we are coming 
whether it's our first day, our first time to ever see prayer nation and to pray together, or whether we have been here from the beginning praying, Father, I thank you that you are raising up a unique and elite advanced army of intercessors in these last days that are able to pray the will of God and the mind of God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have so favored us with your grace that you have overlooked our imperfections and called us anyway. You have overridden, oh God, all of our insecurities and given us boldness in spite of ourselves. Father, I thank you that you have helped us to get past our inconsistencies and through your faithfulness, your grace has covered our gaps. Father, I thank you as we come into this new year, any wavering within us, oh God, is already, Lord Jesus, factored in by the purpose of God and the collective body of Christ is working together and where one falters, another steps up. And when someone gets weak, someone else is strong. And we build each other up in the spirit. And when we weep, we weep together. And when we rejoice, we rejoice together. But we are the body of Christ and we are all supplying are the gifts and the callings that we are all supplying the experience and the faith. We're all giving these special unique abilities to the betterment of the whole. And so I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for this right now. And so I, I, I join myself to the body of Christ and specifically surrender myself to you, Jesus, spirit and soul and body. I want you to say this out loud now. Say, I sanctify myself. In Jesus' name, spirit, soul, and body. I give my body to you, Lord Jesus. I am an extension of your physical body. We are now the physical body of Christ in the earth collectively, and I am one of many members. So I yield my body that I may represent you in the earth, Lord. Let them not see my face, but let them see your face. Let them not hear my voice, but let them hear your voice. Let me see in the spirit. Let me hear in the spirit. Let me smell, oh God. Let me taste, let me touch. Let all of my senses that are in my body inform my spirit man that the same way that my physical body interacts with the material world, that my spirit man will interact with the spirit world and that you would help to bring a framework together in my mind, that you would help me and help everyone that is listening and praying with me right now, that our minds, oh God, would not be run by the carnal mind, but that carnal mind which came after would be subject to the original mind that you gave to man, that mind to communicate with you what we call now the mind of Christ, or who has known the mind of God that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Let me be renewed in the spirit of my mind after the image of him that created me. I pray that we would operate in your image. We confess this now. We submit to your way and to your will about how we should function in this world. We are crucified to the world and the world is crucified to us. And so we say, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You are our Father, which art in heaven, and we exalt you and we thank you that we are your sons and daughters. So let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And let our will be submitted to your will. Let our emotions be submitted to your emotions. Our thoughts with your thoughts. Our way with your way. Let us step into the eternal now, the infinite here the center of one God and the one emotion of love, that my soul would be redeemed and transformed in Jesus' name. So Lord, let me operate in God consciousness, not in self-consciousness. Let me operate according to kingdom understanding and not the wisdom of this world. But grant, O oh God, that we would grow in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and in favor with man as you gave us the example in Luke chapter two. Father, we thank you right now that we are yours, that all things are yours, and we are yours, that possessions will not own us, but that we will hold loosely to the possessions that you've given to us, for we are not defined by what we wear or by what house we live in or what car we drive. We are defined by who we are in you, 
And we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you also, Father, that when we seek first your kingdom, everything that we have need of in this natural world, we can say, give us this day our daily bread, and it comes because we are yours. And so we don't stress about these things. The heathen do, your word says. The Gentiles do. The pagans do. He said, but my children should not. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I thank you that you have a yes face and that you delight in giving good gifts. For every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Would you stop right now and lift your hands to the Lord and just give him praise. Close your eyes for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, as we begin today, I want to say something about your worship. The way you worship is unique, just like your fingerprint is unique, like your iris on your eye is unique. Just as you have unique combination of cells that make up your face so that there is a face ID or, a, or different ways that you can identify yourself very uniquely, whether uh, in some biometric way. I want you to understand that when you go into the spirit world, the same thing exists. When you go into the spirit world, you have a unique signature and that is how you worship and how you pray. I love to tell the story about the man who had a very simple and direct way of talking to God. And I don't remember his name, I'll just say the name is Bob. But he would just say, hello God, this is Bob. That's how he would start every time he prayed. And he would pray about an hour every day. And it was at the same time every day. Well, this man got sick. And maybe you've heard this story before or heard me tell this story before, but for those that have not, let me just share very quickly. When he was in a coma, he was very sick, he was in a coma. Uh, every day for one hour, all of his levels were normal. And then his body would go back to the, you know, to the, the, the bad readings, uh, machines and all that stuff. But for one hour a day, he would have normal readings and they would get so hopeful. And then finally, after about 30 days, he came out of the coma, the coma, and he was better. He was well. And as he came to, he began to tell the story that every day at the hour of prayer, God would say to him, hello, Bob, this is God. And in essence, what he was saying is, you can't talk to me, so I'm still going to talk to you. And it was, it was God's way of showing him that every time he prayed, when he came into his presence, he loved the unique way. Hello, God, this is Bob. Now Bob can't talk, so he says, hello, hello, Bob, this is God. So hello, God, this is Bob. Back and forth, this has been their relationship. And I think that when we come into the presence of God, there is a very unique way that we approach him. And that I want you to celebrate that, and I don't want you to hold back. I don't want you to feel that the way that you do it is wrong. I tell people when they come to the altar to receive the Holy Ghost, sometimes they're looking around and seeing the way other people speak in tongues. And I say, no, don't worry about how somebody else speaks in tongues. You just do what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. And in the same way, we can look around sometimes and see the way someone lifts their hands or you know, they're, they're, they do it the perfect way, whatever way that is. Somebody else, when God moves upon them, they shake their head a certain way or Maybe they dance a certain way. We have a staff member who likes to hop up and down and, and it becomes like a, a category. We call it the, the Herrera hop or the Jose hop. And he smiles and laughs about it because everyone knows that that's the way he worships God. And it's his little signature. I remember one time uh, seeing a man that he couldn't have peripheral vision, so he would just spin around. He would never get dizzy. And we used to, we used to kind of chuckle at him, called him Whirly Bird, but that was, his, that was his way of worshiping God, and it was beautiful. And when you come to God, you have your own signature, and I want you to rest in that. I want you to, I want you to walk in that. I want you to be good with that. I remember one of the things that the Lord taught me to do was to sing, because the Bible says, and uh, Psalms chapter 100, come before his presence with singing. And I went through several months where I, I just felt discouraged and I, I didn't sing. Uh, I thought maybe it was foolish. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm just being a little bit immature by this. Uh, maybe I need to outgrow some of these 
you know, less mature or more fanatical, zealous ways of worshiping and singing in tongues. Maybe I shouldn't sing in tongues every time I come to pray. Maybe I need to be a little bit more sophisticated. And after so many months of of just try of kind of feeling that pressure, you know, the preacher pressure of, you know, coming to God in a certain way that you hear others, maybe changing the voice to the, you know, God is not interested in all that. It doesn't impress him. And quite honestly, it doesn't really impress the people either. You're only kind of fooling yourself when you put on that extra voice. Unless you're an announcer for the NFL, you know, the NFL on Westwood One. Okay, well, we expect somebody to kind of be dramatic in those kinds of terminologies. Or if you're doing something theatrical, you expect the voice to be there. When you're coming to God, you need to be who you are. And that's really what he's saying. And so I, I, I came into prayer one day and the Lord spoke to me and he said, you don't sing to me anymore. And I just started to weep. I just started to weep. And I wept because I didn't think it really mattered. I didn't think he really even cared. I thought that it was something that maybe was just immature and he was just kind of smiling at like, okay, when he's done with that, then maybe we'll have some real prayer that goes on. But no, he was saying, this is what I taught you. This is what you've learned. You've read the scriptures. This is how you approach before me. And there is that creative energy that begins to flow out of the relationship that you have with God when you get real with him, when you get real with him. So I use this term a lot, uh, but I would, like to, I would like to introduce it or reintroduce it, reintroduce it again here on Prayer Nation. When I'm teaching at our church, I'll use this. And when I'm leading on prayer, I will use this. But sometimes um, I don't use it enough on prayer nation. We talk about having breakthroughs. I know everybody has heard that term. I want to break through. I don't want to break down. I want to break through. Uh, If you're uh, having a bad relationship, you break up with someone. So is it up or down or through? Which way is it? But I like, to, I like to add one more sentence into that uh, kind of uh, English. And it's don't pray around, pray through. So if you're going to have a breakthrough, it's because you're not praying around something. Sometimes we just try to get around subjects. There's pain in our spirit. There's pain. And we try to avoid the pain, don't want to talk about the pain. And this is when we become less authentic. We just do the ritual prayers, and those don't get very far. And then we're frustrated because we feel like God is not listening. And he's saying, look, you have some serious alarms going off in your spirit, and you're not addressing those alarms. Uh, many years ago, there was a, a reel-to-reel film that uh, we showed at our church, and it was it, we were very rapture-centric in the 70s and 80s. Uh, I was born in 1970. Growing up in that era, the uh, Cold War era, we were very rapture-centric. And, I mean, even going into the 90s, there was a lot of uh, rapture readiness preaching and teaching that was going on. But especially in the late 70s and 80s, there was um, a, a genre of film that came out that was all about, you know, not missing the rapture. Many of our... Um, even our plays and things that we did were all about the rapture, you know, and scaring people, you know, uh, so that they would uh, have the fear of God in their life so they would not miss the rapture that was soon to come. Many of our elders thought that they would, they would not die, but they would be raptured and we would, you know, they felt that they had a promise from God and we'd see, well, man, they're 80 years old. They're not going to live much longer. Surely Jesus is coming back. If God told them, you know, they're going to live to see the rapture. And, you know, that was that, that was kind of a euphoric kind of rapture uh, centric way. And I remember one of the films that we, we watched was trying to illustrate this and, um, you know, the house was completely on fire. The whole bedroom upstairs was on fire. And uh, someone, you know, in the house says, oh, look, um, there's a fire. Uh, We should call uh, the fire uh, engines and we should call, um, we should call the fire station and tell them. And so they call, yes, uh, this is our address. And they're so all nice and sweet and all, you know, nicely dressed and Uh, we have a fire at our house and uh, would you kindly come and help put that fire out? And as the fire is on the stairs, you know, the, the, uh, 
The father says, well, you know, it's not downstairs yet, so I will think I'll sit and read the newspaper. And he sits and reads the newspaper. And, and the wife says, oh, well, uh, it's, not, it's not yet in the living room, so um, I think let's put on some music and uh, let's play the music now. And, and, they'll play the music. and then the daughter goes, oh, I think it's time for us to, I don't know what, whatever. And they're all doing things as if the fire is not coming in, as if it's not about to burn the whole house down, as if they're not about all to die. And they're sitting in the chair, reading the paper, listening to music, and getting a glass of tea while they're waiting, you know, for the fire engines to finally arrive. And, and the whole thing was like, is this what you're doing with your eternity? Is this how you're viewing your life right now? The whole world is about to burn, and you're just sitting in a chair reading the paper. Uh, some people, there are serious issues and problems going on in their life, and they're very much like that. Their house is burning down, and they just want to pretend you know, um, they're like, oh, the newspapers might be here to see that our house burned. Let's make sure our hair's in good condition. Oh, oh, honey, you need to adjust your tie. It's like, adjust your tie. You need to get out of the house. Like, what are you doing? Save your documents. Get your pictures out. You know, I don't know if there's any valuables anywhere. You might want to grab them and get out. Uh, uh, this, is, this is sometimes what happens. We get in these distracted entertainment drunk societies that we live in little bubbles where we just try to ignore everything. We're on our social media, we're, we're watching our shows, we're listening to our music, we're, you know, we're talk to the hand, the face is not listening. Uh, this, is, this is just avoidance. And when you're in the presence of God, God sees everything. He sees everything. So why are you trying to ignore it? Why are you trying to avoid it? We have to pray honest, open, direct prayers. These are the ones that get the most results. So be who you are, be yourself, don't be afraid because there is grace and we are honest and we operate in the light of God. I want you to stop for a minute right now and we're gonna just pray a few open prayers together about this because this is gonna be a year of accelerating of the kingdom of God and it's so important that we are in tune with him. If you want God to talk to you, you have to be honest in the way you talk to God. The communication lines are built on truth. This is why when we pray the whole arm of God, it starts with the belt, the belt of truth. Truth is not just that we know Acts 2.38 is the saving, uh, the saving gospel, the only saving gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. That's the truth. Oh yes, that is the truth. But truth in this context is being transparent and honesty and, and honest. It means that what is at the surface correlates or corresponds to what is in the core. That what is at your core is not different than what is in the surface. When you are going into spiritual warfare, when you are going into the presence of God, deception is the primary tool that the enemy is going to try to use. And the Bible also talks about deceiving ourselves. So let's go to 1 John chapter 1. And we're going to use this as a template today to pray the scriptures. 1 John chapter number 1. And incidentally, um, one of our scholars at UGST has done some of his um, uh, doctorate work on the fact that, that 1 John was actually a song. And the cadence of it was a song. So think about that the next time you go into prayer, that the scriptures themselves have a rhythm, have a cadence, have music that go with them. And we are the instruments of that music. But let's first, uh, let's first just start by saying, by, by telling the Lord that we want to come before him by praying through our issues, not praying around them. We're going to acknowledge what's going on in our life. We're gonna pray honest prayers. And this is when we're going to have significant breakthroughs. Just take your hands like this and open them up. Take your hands like this and open them up. Father, we open our hands. And as we open our hands, we open our hearts to you. And today, Lord Jesus, we just want to be transformed. We want to be better. We don't want to go around the same cycles again. We don't want to do the same routines. We want to, we want to go forward. We want to break out of the ruts. And we want to take new steps, bold new steps into this future. God, 2024 is about open doors, but we also know that there's many war 
many wars around the open doors that, that when there's an open, active door, Paul told us there were many adversaries. So, Father, we want to take away the tool of the enemy when he deals with us. We do not want to cultivate lies. We do not want to uh, walk in deception. We do not want to deceive ourselves. and We do not want to be deceived. We want truth to be in the inward man. So we start with repentance. We ask you to wash, to cleanse, to forgive. Help us to be honest with ourselves about our situation. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that even though it hurts, oh God, that we would address the pain that is in our lives for pain is our teacher that's showing us how to grow. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this. We thank you, Lord, for this. Last night in our corporate prayer, God gave me four specific things, four specific prayers uh, to pray. That when you are dealing with accusations, you pray the blood or you speak or confess the blood of Jesus. Accusations are dealt with through the blood. When you are dealing with obstacles, opposition, adversaries, you speak the name you speak the name. But when you are dealing with pain, if you have pain in your soul, the Lord talked me, talk to me about praying the word. You speak the word. So in speaking the word, what are you doing? You are repl it's replacement therapy, as Sister Walker loves to say. Word replacement therapy. For all of the dysfunction at, in, in your life, there's pain, uh, that is put in your emotions. Sometimes it's even in your mind. You can have pain when you think about something. Um, many times it's mistakes that we've made. Sometimes it's, it's, it's memories that we have of, if I would have done something different, my outcome would be different, and I'm suffering because of that. Sometimes it's because we have a misconception, and it's like having uh, a joint uh, that's a, a bone that's out of joint. It's like needing a chiropractic adjustment when your back is not in alignment. Wow, it hurts. But when it pops back in place, oh, the relief that comes because you're back in alignment again. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about pain. But while you pray the word, the word is to show you the image of how it's supposed to be. So let's say your marriage is in trouble or maybe your just marriage has stress in it. Maybe communication is an issue. Maybe you're having trouble with your roles. Um, maybe the world system is really pounding away and you're feeling um, apprehensive or you're feeling nervous. Maybe submission's a big issue because uh, there was a problem in your life by authority. Maybe a, a man didn't know how to lead very well because he didn't have a dad in his life. So he's not a very good husband because he never saw the example of what a good husband is all the maybe the men in his mom's life left or they were only there for a short time or they did damage to him so all he's seen is dysfunction and now you're trying to have a godly marriage what do you do with all that well the first thing you have to acknowledge the problems you have to acknowledge the pain in the presence of god but you can't just say heal my pain you have to pray the word and you have to say god let what the word says about marriage be my marriage. Let the original design, let me go back to the beginning and see how man and woman before the fall, how did they function? How did they operate? Let's go back to uh, the New Testament and see Paul's teaching in the book of Ephesians about how a man should love his wife as Christ loves the church and gave himself for it. Okay, God, I'm going to pray those texts and I'm going to say, let me be that, Lord. Teach me how to be that. This is what I'm going to be. I'm going to love my wife. I make a faith confession. I confess the word as Christ loves the church. And then the wives would, would pray those prayers that would pertain to the wife. And then you would maybe pray around that. If you're a husband, you would say, okay, pray around or pray through. What I mean by praying around, I mean I would say I would saturate myself with that. I would continually saturate my marriage with this is what a man is supposed to do. This is what a woman is supposed to do. And every aspect of it, every dimension of it, every inside of it, I would pray, pray thoroughly when I say it in that context 
not in avoidance, but praying around, meaning 360 degrees. I would just saturate myself with that text. I would read the Greek words. I would find out more about what each one of these things means. I would pray, how does it react in my spirit when I say that? What am I doing? I'm submitting my brokenness to the perfect pattern. Say, God, you designed it this way, and it will work. It will work. So this is what I mean when I say, when you are hurting, you pray the word of God. So let's look at let's look at this from First John's perspective, and we'll just pray this in a rhythm about revelation knowledge. Now let's talk about faith just for a minute as it pertains to revelation knowledge. We have a growing collection of spiritual experiences. We have memories, there are testimonies of others, and then there is revelation knowledge. And as we read the word of God in the presence of God, that word begins to build us up. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rima, the enlightened logos, the breathed upon written word of God. So as we pray, we're going from logos prayer to get in the spirit, and when the spirit touches it, you will, you will push off. The spirit will launch you while you're praying the word of God. It will launch you into other prayers that you weren't planning on praying because the pattern is perfect. And when you align yourself with that majestic, perfect will of God that's written in the logos, that pattern, and you are breathing it in and praying it, it will cause your specific pattern and your specific uh, gifts and callings to then come in alignment with the Spirit, and the great conductor will then release Rima to you for your moment right now. You are not going to be very effective against an enemy if you don't first have a directive of a strategy of what it is you're trying to win. What territory are you trying to gain? So this is why when you read the book of Ephesians, finally, my brethren, is at the end of the book because he's giving you almost six full chapters of content, because this is even in the middle of the sixth chapter, um, of all the things that are supposed to be, all the things that, that are desired, and all the things that are promised of God, so that when I put on the whole armor, I'm putting it on with the knowledge of what I should be, what I should have, what I am about to attain, rather than being defensive and just feeling like I am inept or hurting or painful, or there's a gap and the enemy is coming against me and I'm overwhelmed. So I wanna get out of the defensive posture and get into the, the progressive will of God taking new territory, aggressive posture. This is what we're after. So let's pray this in the spirit together and we'll see how the Lord leads us. And we get into this simple cadence, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. So we pray it again slowly, that which was from the beginning. Not he which is from the beginning, but that which was from the beginning. What does that mean, that which was from the beginning? Is that Jesus represents everything that was brought into time in space. He is the word. Without him was not anything made that was made. We learn this from John's gospel. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, First John starts with that which was from the beginning. So he is saying that Everything was perfect from the beginning. And now Jesus came and he manifested himself and he brought that which was from the beginning. He brought that perfect pattern. And so this is what we're praying as we pray this slowly, which we have heard. It started first by what we heard. And then it was what we have seen with our eyes. Now the hour here is collective witnesses our eyes, which we have looked upon, we looked upon. And then he said, we touched him, our hands handled of the word of life. So now that which was from the beginning, that logos, which made everything, 
that God manifests himself in flesh and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That was what John 1 tells us. Now, 1 John 1 is bringing it into this understanding of our in interaction with it. So let's pray that together. Father, we want that original pattern, that design that you had. You saw me from the foundation of the world. You saw us from the foundation of the world. That which was from the beginning. I want that in my life. I want that in every way. I want it in my health. I want it in my thinking. I want it in my emotions. I want it in my choices. I want it in my soul. I want my spirit to be free and healthy and whole. I want everything that you intended for us to be before sin, that which was from the beginning, that was in Christ. That was in Christ. And we have heard now with every word that you spoke, Jesus. We heard that logos. We heard that divine plan. We heard that perfection. We have seen with our eyes now now you were manifest, you were visible, you were seen with our eyes, and I want to see you. I want to see you, Jesus. I want you to make yourself known. I want you to manifest in time and space again for us, with us. I want to have my eyes see you, and I want it to be that we looked upon you. I want that same witness of those early apostles and early leaders that physically saw you. Now we don't know you after the flesh, but we know you after the spirit, so I want to see you in the spirit. I want to I want to look upon you. I want to understand. I want to perceive. And I want to handle you. I want my hands to touch you. I want to touch you. And I want to be touched by you. I don't want to feel far away. I want to be, be as close as a touch as real as a physical a physical impression. Father, in Jesus' name. For the life was manifested, verse 2, and we have seen it. The life was manifested. I want to handle the life. So much around us is dying and death and grief and sorrow. The wages of sin is death. But I want to handle that life. Life was manifested. And we have seen it and bear witness. I have seen that life. I have seen that life as it came into people. I have seen that life as it has transformed entire rooms, entire stadiums, entire congregations, entire regions, entire cities, even nations, oh God, have been, have been, been filled with your life and we have seen it. And we bear witness and we show unto you that eternal life. Eternal life. Life that is without end. Life that will not be stopped. Uh, life that is not limited to time and space. Life that is not limited to this outer man. Life that is not limited to flesh and blood. That which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That life, which was from the very beginning, that life was manifested unto us. The creative energy of God, the means by which God did all things, the divine image, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. We declare it. So first we hear the text, we hear the certainty of John as he as he writes this for the body that what that then was in affirming what they had seen and heard to those who were a generation removed and now we who are thousands of years removed still feel the weightiness of those inspired words and the certainty of their witness and their testimony and so they could declare it but lord not only do we want to hear their declaration, but we want to make that same declaration ourselves. I want it to be for this generation that we can say that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you to the next generation. That you also may have fellowship with us. The fellowship is based 
Your word says the fellowship is based on what we have seen and heard. That my degree of relationship in the body of Christ is based on what knowledge I have of that which was from the beginning. That handling of the word of life, that understanding of the manifest presence of God, this is the basis of our fellowship. That we can fellowship together. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for this. I thank you for this fellowship. This is what makes prayer nation. Prayer nation is that we share in this fellowship. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, the means by which the Father was manifested. We cannot know the Father except through the Son. No man knows the Son save the Father, and no man knows the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. O God, today, today as we pray the word of God, we desire that our joy would be full. Oh, that there would be no lack, O God, in our joy, but it would abound. (laughs) That the joy of the Lord would abound to the people of God all around the world. Would you stop for a minute right now? Would you worship? Would you lift your hands to the Lord and just give him praise? Thank you, Lord. This then is the message we have heard of him and declare unto you. Here it is. God is light and in him is no light darkness at all. We start this new year with this fresh reminder that God is light. We thank you that there's no darkness in you. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. We we do not the truth. Lord, you want us to do the truth. You want us to live the truth. You want the truth to play out in us. Lord, we do not want to lie. We don't want to say that we have fellowship with you and walk in darkness. We cannot, oh God, fellowship with you and walk in darkness. I pray that we would rather walk in the light. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. So first our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Or it could be written, the Father, even his Son, Jesus Christ, or through his Son, Jesus Christ. We have first fellowship with him, and then we have fellowship with each other through him. As he is in the light, we walk in the light. I want to walk in the light, Father, as he is in the light, as Jesus is in the light, as there is nothing hidden as there is no darkness, as all is manifestation, that which is made manifest is light, the scriptures tell us. So, Father, we pray that everything would be manifest. Shine your light in me. I want you to pray it right now. Shine your light in me. Expose every lie. Expose all that is darkness. And help me to separate, to not walk in darkness anymore. In Jesus' name. Now here's a beautiful promise. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, not God. And the truth is not in us. If the truth is in us, then we are going to, verse number nine, confess our sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Hallelujah. Take a moment. Take a moment to celebrate that he is faithful and he forgives us of our sins and cleanses us of all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful, that I can tell you everything, that I can share it all with you, that there's nothing in the dark that makes you afraid. Or intimidated. Nothing in the dark is too much for you. No sin is too great that you will not forgive. 
No failure is too deep that you cannot help me recover. No fall is too too horrible that you cannot help me get back up again. But Lord, we walk in this light and in this truth. We walk, oh God, no longer in deception. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And here's what the scripture says, and his word is not in us. His logos is not in us. So the logos is going to affirm all of this. This is just one chapter where we've given an example of how you pray the word of God, praying the scriptures. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. One year I prayed the entire book of Proverbs uh, over a period of a month. I prayed each chapter each day for the entire month. And instead of just reading the Proverbs intellectually, I prayed the Proverbs. And it was a total different experience. But God will heal us as we pray his word. And then the fourth thing that the Lord gave me last night was that if you want to, if you will identify your potential, when you identify your potential, then you are to speak your promises. Identify your potential and then speak your promises. So these four things, first we identify our accusations. Accusations that are coming against us are there because we're about to have a profound advancement in the spirit. The last thing the enemy brings to try to undermine our confidence is accusations. So when you feel accusations, you're about to be promoted. It's time to get up and just plead the blood of Jesus. I don't plead innocence. I don't plead guilty. I just plead the blood. And then second, when I am seeing obstacles or opposition, I speak the name. I pray the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name, every demon has got to flee. In Jesus' name, the mountain has got to go. I did two Sundays of this new year. One was on speaking to the sycamine tree. The other one was speaking to the mountain. The sycamine tree is talking about your past or your history, the root structure of bitterness and resentment. You speak to that to be removed and cast into the sea, that it cannot grow ever again. It's lost forever. And so our past does not rule over us. We take charge. We speak to those emotions. We speak to those memories. We speak to our history. We speak to those roots to leave. And what is in our past is gone. But when we talk about the future, it's the mountain in front of us. And so Jesus said, speak to the mountain and it will remove and nothing shall be impossible to you. So this is what you are doing. You're speaking in Jesus' name to that sycamine tree or to that mountain. You're speaking to them. Those oppositions, those things that are uh, keeping you from going forward in the kingdom of God. Third was, was when we acknowledge our pain. Don't ignore your pain, but acknowledge your pain. And then you pray the word or you speak the word and you will be made whole. Final one is that when you see your potential, now you acknowledge your potential. Focus on that for a while. Oftentimes we get so caught up in what's wrong, in our pain, in our past, in our weakness, in our failings, and we can depress ourselves so bad that we can talk ourselves out of all of our promises. He says, no, see your potential. See the potential of a new year. See the potential. This is a year of open doors. 2024 is open doors. So even if you use it from the, from the Hebrew year, we talked about this uh, when it first changed back last Gregorian calendar, 2023, last fall. We moved into the new Jewish year, 5784. We talked about this. 80 is pay, which is mouth. Four is dalit, which is doors, the imagery of a door. Each letter and number coincides together. They have symbols which uh, help you to understand the meaning of these Hebrew words, Hebrew letters. So when you say 84, 57, 84, you're saying a decade of speaking, and then particularly in four is doors. So we're speaking open doors, we're releasing open doors, we're walking through open doors. We are taking on a, a, a posture of moving forward and advancing. So there are specific things that God is releasing and we have to declare them. We declare those promises. We declare the remas that are current, that are for us right now. 
I have been speaking as much as possible the things that God has, has put into my spirit as Ramos for this year. I believe that in this first two months of the year, first two to three months of the year, is all about alignment and repentance and, and, and more preparation as we are getting ready for uh, tremendous change coming into the world. Coming around the Easter time, the Lord showed me that this is when the glory would begin to descend upon the church, and we would have a season where it would be a presence, current, not, not need-based prayer, but presence of God-based prayer, being lost in his presence, the lingering glory of God just staying with us, and there would be a sustained period of time in which we are lost in the presence of God and it would be a movement, a worship movement, a renewal. There will be names of people that we have not seen or heard of that will emerge and will write new music and we'll hear from them. And then there'll be seasoned people that God has used for many years and some even decades that are gonna write new music. But it's gonna carry us into the glory of the presence of God in a very unique and joyful and satisfying way, not in a burden stressful way, we are unloading those burdens, but then we're going to step into this glory of the presence of God where we will yearn for Jesus. And it's going to be a Jesus movement. The Lord told me it was going to be like ascension, music to ascend into the high places. And then from that, I saw angelic ministry, and then I saw angels releasing healing, and I saw massive miracles and gifts of healing, and the corporate faith of the body of Christ beginning to rise as more and more people are hearing the voice of God. And this will continue into the month of August. And then in August, I saw an advancing of taking new territory and anthems and an amassing of the armies of God and militant spiritual warfare praying, victorious, overcoming, tearing down strongholds, praying. So this is a progression that I've seen in the spirit that God showed me for 2024, 5784, uh, leading us all the way to Rosh Hashanah and coming into the new year um, in our 2024 Gregorian calendar fall, but the end of 5784 is going to be carried all the way into the end of 5784 will be that militant, triumphant, victorious, taking new territory. So these are prophecies that I am speaking, that I am releasing, and I'm declaring as Rima words. And there's many more things that God has spoken that are, that are being carried over and continuing on. But these are the things that are going to help ignite the other promises and other prophetic words that God has been speaking to us. And we will see an advancement of visitation, transformation, and multiplication. There will be, especially this year, a spirit of multiplication coming on the body of Christ. So I wanted to declare some fresh Rima, and I want to encourage you as we close out this broadcast today that you will just speak these Rima words in your own life and that you will agree with me with these voices, uh, with many voices coming together, con concurring with what the Spirit of God is saying. I have, uh, I have, been listening to Heart of Worship, our United Pentecostal Church has a Heart of Worship um, uh, ministry that's going on where we're collaborating with apostolic writers from all over uh, the United States that come together in North America, and they write music. Uh, they were listening to my New Year's Eve prophecy, and got, Sister Laura Payne uh, talked to me about this and sent me some of the new music that's already being written right now, and it's completely in alignment. I had no idea what was going on. But the Holy Spirit has been falling. They've been laying on their face, and they're already writing music. Last October, interestingly, this coincides with the Jewish New Year and not the Gregorian New Year. And then coming into the New Year, they're recording. So isn't it amazing how the two calendars go together? They're writing music, and now they're recording that music. And it is, is amazing. We believe that more of this is coming, but these are things that God is doing to prepare us. So just as... Uh, that one example, there's many examples around the world right now. I want you to pray what is relative to you. And there's one more Rima that God gave me this morning that he said every city has a rhythm and the church has to get into the rhythm of every city and then bring in the cadence of the will of God into that rhythm. 
If you're if you are in a smaller town, that it might go a little bit slower, but there is a rhythm there. And if you can get into that rhythm, you can win people to God. If you are out of sync with the rhythm of a city, you might have a difficult time in those seasons of harvest, really getting traction. But God spoke this to me. I've never heard this before, but every city has a rhythm. Get in the rhythm. I heard him say it. Get in the rhythm of your city, and then you'll be able to influence people and make a difference and make disciples. So this is our this is another thing. So take those, the rhythm of the Rima that is in your city and pray it as we close this broadcast today. Father, we thank you right now for all of these Rima words that you've given to us, all the different things that you're speaking about your presence, all the ways in which we are getting closer to you and we are opening our hearts to you and being honest. We thank you, Father, for this visitation that's coming, this unprecedented harvest that's coming and you're activating people all around the world. You're helping us to overcome our fear. You're overcoming our complacency. You're getting us out of our ruts and you're activating us. Thank you, Lord, for fresh anointing. Thank you for confirmations of your word. Thank you, oh God, for so many things that you've already done to confirm what I prophesied on New Year's Eve. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for the, 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 the tremendous way that the Spirit of God works. And I pray that it would work with every believer right now, with every disciple, with every person listening or watching right now, whether they are live or watching this recorded later. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help each Rima word that is in our lives to be activated and accelerated so that there can be multiplication. So leaders can be raised up and many, many more disciples can be made. That we will have the structure built, oh God, to accommodate the growth that you are ready to give us. I thank you, Father for the superabundance that you're bringing into your kingdom, oh God, abundant harvest, abundant anointing, abundant favor, abundant finance, oh God, abundant, Lord Jesus, leaders and volunteers, ready, oh God, to go, ready to be, and that protection, the anointing of God, the angels of the Lord with us, the mighty weapons of our warfare, the spiritual gifts, the seven spirits of God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the resources of heaven that we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And now God, activate your word, activate every Rima, that our full potential for this year can be done, that we will finish. We will not just have a foundation laid of what we have started, but we will finish our assignments in Jesus' name. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Time just goes by so fast when we're together, but we love you. You're amazing people of God. You truly are. And it's always our joy to hear from you, connect with us, share our broadcast with others, get the good word out there. If this has blessed you and encouraged you, help someone else to be encouraged with you, share it with or watch together. But we'll see you again next week, God willing, on Friday. Take care until we connect again.